Daniel Skinner, who uh, was on ESPN, one of the top, the top dunk of the year, or that was 20, 2012? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> but tonight, you got you and Reggie Seddon. How about a hand for Reggie Seddon from uh, former Central Bobcats? Has anyone ever heard of the game called Two Truths and a Lie? Two Truths and a Lie. All right. The way it works is this. I told Daniel and Reggie both to tell me three things about themselves that nobody knows. Two of them are true and one is a lie. And you, the audience, have to guess which one is false and whoever does wins the four ASU basketball tickets for Saturday's game against Texas and in Kingsville. Now, you can't just yell it out. You gotta, I mean, if you know the answer, raise your hand so I can at least or come up here to the stage and tell me who you, which of the three you think is false. So, Daniel's going first. And by the way, I was told by a couple of your teammates, I asked who was the best trash talker in the team. They said it was you. Yeah, pretty much. That is? What is it? Pop. Tell me, every, Pop, is that what you say every time? Oh, Pop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you make that with your eyes like that, too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, Pop. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Daniel Skinner, three things about yourself. All right. Two true, one's false. Go ahead. Okay. I made a 3.0 this semester. You made a 3 pointer when? 3.0. Great. Oh, 3.0 semester. Uh, 3.0 GPA. Okay. That's number one. I keep going. Oh. Uh, I met Dirk Nowinski. I beat LeBron James out on sports in the top 10 plays. All right, let me get this straight. All right. You made a 3.0 GPA last semester. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you you uh, you beat LeBron James in the top 10 plays. Yes, sir. And then you met Dirk Nowinski. Yes, sir. Okay. So which of those three you guys think is, uh, that gentleman over there raised your hand. He, he did meet uh, the coach, the, the Vinsky, I mean the... He hasn't, he hasn't met Dirk? No. Correct. That is right. So, come on, come on up here. So the night that you beat LeBron in top ten plays, was that the dunk? Yes, sir. He was number two, he was kind of mad, he tweeted me and stuff like that, but... You know. Now, for those who haven't seen the dunk, what's the best way? They can, is there a way you can go uh, online? You can uh, Google Daniel Skinner dunk or go on YouTube and put Daniel Skinner dunk. Okay. Oh, All right, come on up here, buddy. Or, let's see. I'll get hand those two. Daniel, yeah, why don't you give him the ticket? Those are four ASU basketball tickets. Thank you. Thank what's your Craig. name? Craig. Craig, right. Congratulations, Craig. Craig. All the Rams here tonight, and uh, head coach Chris Beard is with us. And coach, thanks for bringing the guys out here. And... Uh, they're they're all crowded around the pool table. Looks like they're they're already trying to, to play each other in the pool over there. Yeah, when I told them, Jeremy, you were picking up the tab for dinner tonight, they were real excited. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> My name is Jimmy Boswell. Just put the. Uh... All right, let's talk about uh, first off, uh, big win over the weekend over Cameron. You guys uh, now in second place and. Uh, a lot of basketball still left to go, eight games left, but that, that was a big one on the road against a tough Cameron team that doesn't lose hardly ever at home. Yeah, we had a lot of respect for Cameron's team, we still do. They uh, haven't lost a home game in over two years. I think they'd won 18 of their last 20. And so, uh, you know, that kind of record speaks for itself. So our guys were a little bit on edge and focused and thought we played well on uh, Saturday. All right, so I want to ask you this. Over the weekend, Coach K, Mike Krzyzewski, head coach of Duke, picked up his 900th win at Duke. Now, you had a chance to coach with and coach under one of the greatest coaches of all time, Bobby Knight. Would you say Coach K, greatest coach of all time? Or, I mean, that's a tough question. What do you think? It's not tough at all for me. I mean, I, loyalty is the number one thing. That's an easy question. Uh, Bob Knight's the best basketball coach ever. Okay, tell me why. Uh, well, for one, he was Coach uh, Krzyzewski's coach, and so a lot of the stuff Coach K does today is based on Coach Knight, but I think if you look at Coach's record uh, over a period of time, uh, number one, back in those days, they didn't play as many games, so when Coach has over 900 victories, it was during seasons where they only played 25 or 26. Division one teams these days get over 40 games in some cases. Uh, also, you look at it over a 40-year career with no NCAA violations, not even getting close. Um, I think that speaks for itself. And the guy to our left here, Zach Jones, uh, was at Texas Tech with us and had a chance to have a relationship with Coach, and I, I think he would echo what I'm saying. Wait. Oh, Zach, same thing? Oh, yes, sir. I've, uh, I've gotten to speak with him a few times and, uh, you know, just got to discuss the offense and all that good stuff, and I, I'd have to agree with Coach. All right. 
got uh, Zach Jones, where we talked to Chance Chambers a little bit, and Chris Beard, head coach of the Rams. All right, so you mentioned before Bobby Knight. And by the way, he's the last coach to coach a team that went undefeated the, the entire season back in 1976. I asked you this the other day. Do you think we'll ever see a Division One basketball team go undefeated all the way through a college basketball season? No, I really don't. I think the competition's too, uh, too tough these days. Not that there hasn't always been good teams, but... All of us in college basketball, we play tougher non-conference schedules. Um, we all play in preseason tournaments and preseason classics where you're going to be tested. Just like our team this year at Angelo State, we played three or four ranked teams in our non-conference schedule, and that's very common in today's college basketball. I know you have a guy on your team that we really don't even know his real name. We, I didn't know his real name for a while until you told me. There's a, there's a guy on your team you call Rec Center. What is this all about? Yeah, Marshall Cowley. Rec Center, you here? That a boy. Come on up, Rick. Marshall Calvin. Out of Fort Worth, right? I believe out of Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah, we kept the story in this. Well, the first thing that I do um, when I get a coaching job is I always go to the rec center on campus. Because what you really want to try to do when you get a job is change the culture. And the first thing with culture is the work ethic and love of the game. And so I always go to the rec center and just kind of ask around. No one really knows who I am at that point, literally the first day on the job. and I walked in the rec center about 11 p.m. on the first night I had the Angelo State job and asked some students, asked the workers at the front desk of the rec center, hey, is there anybody here that comes in here every day? Is there a gym rat on this campus? And without question, people didn't even hesitate. They're like, yeah, that kid over there in the corner. And then I asked the next person, yeah, that guy right there, he's always there. And uh, I was told that rec center play ball in the morning, play ball in the afternoon, play ball in the evening. And uh, when I looked at his grades the next day, I, I agreed. He probably did play basketball throughout the day. Uh, but no, uh, we, we gave Rex Center an opportunity to come out and, and try out for the team. And not only did he uh, make the practice roster, he made the uh, playing roster. He's playing some games this year. And I think uh, a lot of people don't know him because he doesn't score a lot of points or get his name in the paper. But there's nobody that's been more important to our success so far uh, than the guy to my right here at Rex Center. And so what made today special was uh, with the, uh, the Catholic ceremonies going into town, I guess the bishop, right. um, the Janelle Center became a church this afternoon, and we weren't able to uh, practice, so we took our team to the rec center today, uh, which you can imagine was an emotional day for rec center. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was really worried See, that's about That's why he's a little cheered up right now, isn't he? Yeah, it was like, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I was a big Jordan fan. Yeah. And I remember when Jordan retired from the Bulls, Took a year or two off and came back with the Washington Wizards. Yeah. And I'll never forget the, the first game back when Jordan, as a wizard, went back to Chicago and played in the United Center. I mean, it was huge. It was uh, I skipped school that day. I was so excited. And uh, I always thought that was probably the biggest homecoming I had ever seen in athletics until today. Today, watching Rec Center walk back into the Rec Center <laughs> to practice, you know, I mean, there was literally students standing outside was waiting for him. Yeah. There was uh, numerous girls in the stands cheering his name. And then, and, uh, you know, Rec Center actually dunked the ball today in practice for the first time. Really? Yep. So it's, it's a just, true story. It's all about the home court. Uh, but, but it was fun to watch Rec Center back in the Rec Center today. You want to talk? Rec all right, Rec Center, Mar does anyone actually call you Marshall? I don't know. Okay, put that mic up. No, sir, not on the team. So who who actually calls you your real name? Uh, just my friends. I just uh, talk to around school and stuff. Nobody on the team, though. The train is nobody. Did anybody call you Rec Center? I mean, did they call you Rec Center before you started playing the Rams? No, sir. No, sir. That, that was like our name that Coach Beard ever gave. Coach Beard, yes, sir. He gave me that. And name. you and you love the name. Love it. That's, <laughs> my, pride. That's my pride, Rec Center. All right. How about a hand for Rec Center, Marshall Cowell?